so. Yeah, how about on the sound? I just, I just came back from an energy medicine conference where the person teaching it was seeing colors for around everybody, saying, oh, now you're changing from this to that. And she was talking about how the meridians and the energy moving in all the meridians have different colors and change colors. Do you know about any Anything well, two things. One is historical, and that many ancient traditions, healing traditions, Indian especially, uh, relate, uh, like the, the Devnagari alphabet in India is colors. It's called Varnamala, which means garland of colors. So there is a long uh, history going back thousands of years of, of linking these kind of two things together. To what aspect they may be describing genuine synesthesia, and to what aspect they may be idealized extrapolations, we can never say. Um, and, but the other is that now that we've studied, there's been a, a paper, a colleague of mine in London wrote a wonderful paper about emotionally mediated synesthesia. And in it, you know, he says, it may be that old grandmas in the woods and the witches that you went to to get your aura read, that they really were synesthetic and nobody knew and, and that's, they just were doing their thing. So we, they didn't put a name to it. Messian had synesthesia work in both directions. Usually it's a one-way street, so it's, you know, it's uh, sound to, to vision. But Messian, when he saw colors, he heard music, and when he heard music, he saw colors. So when oh, he yeah. was commissioned to write at Au Canyon des Etoiles, from the Canyon to the Stars, he was in Bryce Canyon, and he said, my eye went up the colored cliffs of the wall, and the music just wrote itself. So he, he invented that whole system of the modes of limited transposition to convey the color of the chords. And in Messiaen, like in Hockney, for example, Hockney responds to sequence, to melody. That's what triggers color in Hockney. Now, Messiaen, it's the, it's the vertical intervals mm -hmm. between the notes. So that's why you have all these big chord clusters in him. And that produces the color. But he also said, for instance, he was at, I can't remember, was an exhibit or a film, and he had to walk out because the, the colors and the sounds just didn't match. And like, so they would have, you know, some scene being portrayed with some kind of music, and he said, oh, it just made me ill to my stomach because it just didn't go together. And that's a very common reaction for someone with synesthesia. If it's not the same correspondence that they have, it could be like physically nauseating. I wanted to follow up on an idea that, which was that I mean, neither one of us are synesthetic. But um, if, you want to, if you want to experience synesthesia, learn to meditate. Don't take LSD. Because synesthesia is 10 times more common during meditative states. And the longer people meditate, the more experience they have, the more likely they are to experience synesthesia. And like adept teachers, over half of them have, have polymodal, multi-sensory experiences. And this is part of the evidence that synesthesia is widespread in the population and that it may possibly be cultivated, that it's just, it's just hovering there under the edge of consciousness. Sometimes it also has, when we are falling asleep, hypnopompic circumstances, is that you have multisensory experiences. So there's a hand in the back that just shot up. Uh, kids who are, uh, have autism have trouble separating out stimuli. Are they synesthetes? Do they have a no, potential being? No, actually, autism, autism is almost the opposite of synesthesia in a way, that they have trouble with emotional connections, whereas synesthetes, it just comes all too easily. So no, there's not, an, there's not a higher incidence of synesthesia in autism, and there, there's not a link between them um, genetically. We really want to raise his hand and say synesthetes. I'd love to hear from him. He's had a synesthetes. <laughs> oh, yes, great. Um, I just want to know, uh, are different sorts of synesthesia, like if a mother has, gets sound synesthesia, will her daughter have sound synesthesia, or is it just not? Oh, there? yes, it, when it runs in families, what happens? Uh, well, then Vladimir Nabokov, for example, Vladimir Nabokov and his, son, and his mother had colored hearing, he had colored hearing, and Dmitri, his son, has colored hearing. So there, there, there you have, it follows through. But not necessarily, so you may have colored letters and numbers in one person, and then let's say um, their, their daughters will have a different kind of synesthesia. So it doesn't, the, the type, the phenotype, which means the physical expression of it, does not come through genetically. It, it could be anything. And twins could have different kinds of synesthesia. What kind do you have? Um, I get colors from numbers and words and colors and shapes for concepts. For concepts. Does it, the different senses has to happen very much at the same minute? 
sometimes, for instance, if you listen to music, you think of some kind of picture, but that's a little bit goes through your conscious. I think you, know, you thought about, it, but that's not synthesis. That's not synthesis. Yeah, that's See, imagery. Yeah, like I have an experience. I saw a painting, a Chinese painting at the National Gallery. Uh, the peonies with very abstract and the very um, realistic bows in the same painting. The moment I saw it, I feel I can smell the uh, the, the scent of it. But that only happened once. It never happened before, never happened after. <coughs> how, how does that work? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could be here all night. How does that work? <laughs> It may have been a one-time thing. Oh. <laughs> you, you can come to my so house next it's all year very when evanescent. the bloom. <laughs> it's all very evanescent, a one-time thing. That's wonderful. I don't know if I want to get into neuro, neuro, <laughs> neuroethology of art, but there is a topic of, of neurologists writing about art and why. I mean, there's a painting, doesn't look like anything. Why do we value it? Why do we look at it? What does it do? And art is giving us a jolt. Of, of emotional recognition, and we're not conscious of it, and we either respond to it or we don't. And that, those circuits can then travel in other places and stimulate other things in us. And one time it'll be one experience, and another time another. It's like memory. Memory is not like a, a video camera in our head where we play back things exactly as they happened. Each time remember, it's a creative act. It's always different with that, each recollection. So our, our experiences are very fluid, very evanescent, unrepeatable. There's another question. It makes, makes being alive so wonderful. Yeah, you, mine is more uh, a comment. Like my son just mentioned about his synesthesia. Long before we realized... Do you have synesthesia? No. Yeah. Okay. Well, that wasn't the mother of question. No. Um, but long before we realized he had it, I already thought his relationship to books was different to everyone else's. You know, he read them more intensely, he read them faster, he read them over and over, his relationship was terribly different to everyone else's. And then it made sense to me that he experienced it. Something else is going on with the words. Yeah. So his experience is actually different. I, I was taking some notes and you commented that synesthetes have more dreams. Um, my daughter has synesthesia and she has a lot of nightmares. Is that, is that, she's 16, is that connected? Uh, not that I'm aware. Okay, just dreams. Well, dreams are, well, as you fall asleep, that's, that's, that is an, 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 an occasion in which us non-synesthetes can experience synesthesia in that transition from wakefulness to sleep. It's more common to have that. Question way over there. Yes? Um, you. Yeah, I just had a, a question. Is, uh, you know, people are sometimes like a, a car accident and they damage part of the brain. Has there ever been any, you know, people not previously having this condition then? Yes, actually, yes. You know, they, 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 I wrote a paper about that, um, that, that closed head trauma can cause a temporary synesthesia, usually between sound, sight, and pain, and, uh, or sense, or, or touch. And then there's a wonderful case, um, I think actually Oliver Sacks wrote about it, which a, uh, a painter had synesthesia, he had an accident, he became colorblind, and he not only lost his sense of color, but he lost his synesthesia as a result of the brain injury. So there's a so you can have a dissociation of, 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 the, of the two. And unfortunately, we've been given the signal that to we the have to leave. Line? Yes. The, oh, They're yes. going to lock the gallery. So unless <laughs> we all want to have a pajama party. So. <laughs>